I get asked all the time, Alex, what are the top three rod and reel combos you would buy? What are the top four rod and reel combos you would buy? What are the top five rod and reel combos that you would buy? If you could only have a few rod and reel combos, what would you get? Well, today I'm going to answer that question. It's a question, like I said, I get all the time, and I think it's a really good question to ask. Now, obviously, there's rods and reels out there that can cover a whole lot of things and that are good at a whole lot of things, and then there are rods and reels that are very specific to what you're doing. But I've got five rods and reels out right now that if I had to fish from my boat, the bank, the kayak with somebody out of the back of their boat, travel across the country, fish on every lake that you could imagine, these are the five rods and reels that I'm going to bring with me and that I'm going to do work with. So before we get into all that and we get into this list, I want to thank you guys for taking time out of your busy day, your busy week to come hang out with me and to watch these videos. If you're new to my channel, please hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell to let you guys know when I put out all of my videos. Also, for everybody watching, please go leave a comment down below of a video or a video topic that you guys would like to see me cover. Obviously, it's all because of you guys that this channel grows like it does, and it's obviously you guys wanting to watch this content that is why it's growing so I want to know what you guys want to see now keep in mind for me right now I am full-time in school 40 hours a week I work I'm an elementary school teacher for you guys that don't know and so a lot of you guys that were newer to the channel back in like April May that time frame got very used to me putting out videos every other day where I was fishing in every single video and kind of integrating tips into those videos well that was during the pandemic that was during uh, summer break and I try to fish as much as I possibly can during fall and winter and Thanksgiving break and stuff like that but right now five days a week I'm working and I only get two days on the weekend to fish now I'm not complaining about that what I'm just saying is when you say I want to see more fishing content trust me I wish I was out there fishing five days a week like I was when the pandemic was going on but right now I'm limited to the weekends and so I go out at least one or two days a week and try to put some fish in the boat and I also go on afternoon trips when I can it just doesn't always work out so kind of keep that in mind when you're asking for the kind of videos that you guys want to see trust me I want to be out on the water but right now tip videos and kind of doing these more simple videos is what I can get done while working just want to let you guys know that obviously be as transparent as I can and just share that information with you guys but I really do appreciate you so go leave me a comment let me know what you guys want to see but let's get into this video and let's start off with the very first rod and reel combo and that's gonna be a seven foot medium fast action spinning rod paired up with a 200 size spinning reel now what i have here in my hand is a lose mock smash combo this is an amazing very very affordable spinning rod combo that anybody could pick up and start using and i really think that's the most important part about a seven foot medium fast action spinning rod and spinning reel combo is just the simplicity of it you know when you're first learning how to fish whether it be throwing small crankbaits small jerk baits soft plastics like the wacky rig the shaky head the tube ned rigs all those kinds of things you're going to find the most success and be the most efficient with a seven foot medium fast action spinning rod uh, you can skip with this thing you can throw with this thing you don't have to worry about it bird nesting especially with the rod, the line combination that i'm going to talk about and i just feel like every person should have a good spinning rod in their boat now for me i've got two spinning rods in the whole boat and those two spinning rods do everything i need them to do whether it be dropping on a fish with a demiki rig or a drop shot throwing a tube dragging a shaky head throwing a wacky rig a ned rig throwing small crankbaits small jerk baits small flukes those two spinning rods do it all now where i live in the country it's not super important for me to have like specific spinning rods for specific you know jobs and specific problems that i'm going to run into for my buddy mr ben nowak that lives up north it does you know he does a lot of great lakes fishing so he has like a specific tube rod and a specific ned rig rod the reason for that is because he uses spinning rods a lot more than i do and so he needs a lot for very specific applications but i feel like if you're just getting into fishing if you're fishing in the kayak fishing from the bank a good old-fashioned seven foot medium fast action spinning rod is the way to go now the line combo on here is very important too because i feel like this also allows me to do a lot of different things i'm running some 20 pound braid 
to an eight to 12 pound fluorocarbon liter. And what's really cool about that is you can adjust what you're fishing to based on your liter strength and liter material. So say you fish mixing water, you know, where it's fresh and salt mixing, you're gonna be running into redfish and flounder. You can throw some 15 pound mono on there and go to work on them. Say that you're fishing in those really clear, deep Holland reservoirs, you can throw some eight pound on there and go to work on them. Say that you're throwing a little bit heavier bait, you know, like a jerk bait or something like that, and you're fishing it really shallow and you don't want to get it hung up you can throw some 12 or 15 pound on there it's whatever you want that leader material strength to be it's all up to you and it helps you to adjust to whatever you happen to be throwing but for me it's 20 pound braid to usually for me an 8 to 10 pound fluorocarbon leader and i can do literally anything that you can imagine as far as spinning applications go with this rod and reel the next one is going to be what I call my Texas rig rod. This is the rod that I'm going to use for throwing a Texas rig, throwing a jig, throwing a Carolina rig, throwing any of those a little bit bigger applications that I can't throw on the spinning rod. And that's going to be a seven foot to seven, three, seven, four medium heavy fast action rod. Now what I'm using is a loose super grip. This is a seven, three and a half medium heavy fast action. And for me, I use this thing for a little bit of everything. You guys have seen this rod a ton on this channel. I use it to flip a Texas rig. I use it to cast a Texas rig. I've thrown Carolina rigs on this thing. I throw jigs on this thing. And you can really get away with anywhere from a quarter ounce all the way up to three quarters, almost an ounce size baits with this thing and fish them very very successfully you can also throw a bunch of different types of baits on this thing if you want to run braid on here which we'll talk about line here in just a minute if you want to run braid on here you could also throw frogs and do some light like heavy cover flipping with this thing and be able to get away with it personally i'm fishing a 75 one to one gear ratio reel and some 17 pound fluorocarbon because across the board that 7.5 gear ratio reel and that 17 pound fluorocarbon are gonna be able to do just a little bit of everything. Whether I said like dragging a jig, flipping a Texas rig, whether it be a little bit heavier applications or a little bit lighter applications, that 17 pound fluorocarbon is going to do the job that it needs to do and put fish into the boat but just a good general purpose casting rod that's what i consider this just a general purpose casting rod is awesome because it can do a little bit of everything as far as those things in that kind of finesse realm of fishing that your spinning rod can't do moving on we're going to keep in that seven three to seven and a half foot range of rod but we're going to bump it up to a heavy this is what i consider my frogging and flipping rod and for me here in tennessee and all throughout the south we have a lot of riverine style fisheries that have a lot of grass in them so all throughout the summer and all throughout the spring and on into the fall we run into a lot of grass and i do a lot of grass fishing so for me it's very important to have a seven three to seven and a half foot heavy grass style rod that i run 65 pound braid on and so for me this is a seven three heavy fast action loose tp1x rod I've again got it paired up with a 7.5 gear ratio reel and some 65 pound braid and obviously you guys can see I've got a frog on here and it was awesome because the other day I was having a conversation with a good buddy of mine Michael and we were talking about you know hey man I need some rods that can do a little bit of everything or I need a rod that can help to fill a specific niche but still be general purpose and something like this TP1X that 7.3 heavy fast action rod with some braid on it you can use this thing for flipping heavy jigs flipping heavy cover even a little bit of light punching definitely frogging open water frog fishing you can throw big carolina rigs on it you know if you're making really long casts that heavy action rod's going to help you to really set the hook on those fish those bigger jigs when you're dragging football head jigs and stuff like that and you can still run that 65 pound braid on there or even 50 pound braid and get away with it and even in some cases 40 pound braid and get away with it and then throw some leader material on there if you need to in certain situations so if you're in a kayak in the bank fishing out the back of your buddy's boat and you need a more general purpose heavier application rod that obviously the spinning reel and the medium heavy can't cover a good general purpose seven three to seven and a half foot heavy rod can be very very important to putting fish into the boat bank kayak or wherever you guys happen to be fishing and so now 
I know what you're saying, Alex, what's the reel specifically? So for me, I'm throwing a Hyper Mag on here. This is a very expensive reel by Lou's, one of their more top tier reels. And it's one of my favorite reels in their lineup just as far as reliability. But I'll be totally honest with you, a Lou's LFS 7.5 gear ratio reel is probably one of the best reels that you can put on any rod that you have. And it is just a reel that for me, I have probably seven or eight of them and I've absolutely abused the crap out of them and they have never broke on me. And so I'll link the rods, reels, all that kind of stuff down below. And what I'll kind of do is I'll do a more affordable version of this and then I'll do a more expensive version of this so you guys can check out both of those. Um, but just to say again, some kind of 7.3 to 7.5 foot heavy action rod that you can throw some braid on, at least for me here in Tennessee and probably all throughout the South, is very important as one of your top five rods and reels. The next one is going to be a 6.8 to 7 foot medium moderate fast action rod and this is going to be a rod that again kind of like your spinning rod you can do a lot of things with in in a pinch this is a rod that for me has done a lot of a lot a lot of things so for me right now obviously this is a 6.8 medium moderate action lose tp1 black rod and i throw jerk baits on this thing and i'm very specific about the rod i like to throw my jerk baits on and this rod really fills that niche. But this is also a rod that in a pinch I've thrown a topwater on. I've thrown a shaky head on. I've thrown even a wacky rig on. It is a really, really awesome rod for those little bit lighter applications. And I've even thrown crankbaits, thing, crankbaits on this thing in a pinch as well um, just because of that moderate fast action. It's good at a little bit of everything really really good at jerk baits but good at a little bit of everything and what i'm throwing on here is another 7.5 gear ratio reel this is obviously the smash reel you can tell by the, the color and then i've got some 10 pound fluorocarbon on here as well but like i said just really good general purpose that you can do a little bit of everything with but for me i feel like having that rod that you can throw a jerk bait a top water a crank bait you know some of those smaller more finesse type of you know shaky heads and even small like um, finesse style jigs and things can be really really important because it can be difficult to throw them on the spinning rod and still be super effective with them and they're still just a little too small for your seven foot um, to seven three medium heavy general purpose rod this six eight kind of helps to fill that niche in between those two rods but still be able to throw things like your treble hook baits like your jerk baits and stuff like that but again some six eight to seven foot medium rod i think is super super important and the last one for me in this lineup is going to be the only rod that isn't really super general purpose and i truly believe that every person should have a good cranking rod i really believe that i think um for me I, I mean you guys know me if you've been around this channel for any amount of time i love to crank a crankbait whether it be little small body crankbaits big 10 xd square bills mid-range divers i love cranking a crankbait and so i think to be successful at least for me in my world and living in east tennessee cranking a crankbait is a staple of, of catching fish on all the lakes around here having a good cranking rod is super important for me i'm throwing a seven foot medium moderate action loose cranking rod now i throw a bunch of different rods in the loose cranking series and i'm going to link a couple down below again a more affordable and the more expensive version of a rod but they're always going to be a seven foot medium moderate action rod now, this rod is very important it is a combination of glass and graphite and so what that means is it's a composite and it makes it very moderate action it makes it bend almost down to the last guide right here and what that helps to do is it helps to absorb the shock of those fish eating that crankbait it helps to drive those treble hooks in and it really helps those fish to keep from coming unpinned whereas when you're throwing it on those little bit faster action rods those fish can come up shaken and when that rod can't absorb the shock of that it can't absorb the shock of that hook set a lot of the times that's where people lose fish and so having that cranking specific rod is very important and also the reel this is the only reel in this top five that is going to be a 6-8 gear ratio reel. The reason I'm throwing a 6-8 gear ratio, again, it's very specific to cranking a crankbait. That 6-8 gear ratio, the amount of line that it brings in, the 
action that it helps to impart on the crankbait, that 6.8 is just perfect. I don't know why it's so perfect, but it's perfect. If you talk to guys who are cranking masters like Kevin Van Dam, he'll tell you the same exact thing. There's a sweet spot in that 6.8 to 6.3 gear ratio reel that is just what you need for throwing crankbaits of all different sizes. Obviously, when you get up into the big 10XDs, that's a more hyper-specific kind of rod and reel combo we can talk about at a later date. But anything from a KVD 1.5 to a Spro Rock Crawler to a Bandit 200 to, you know, DT6s, DT10s, I mean, all that kind of range of baits, that humongous category of baits that we consider crankbaits, 6.8 gear ratio is going to get work done. And then I got that paired up with some 10-pound fluorocarbon just so no matter what crankbait that i've got on it's going to be able to hit that maximum diving depth get the most action out of it and do everything that it needs to do but like i said that's going to be the most specific rod in this lineup but for me year in year out bait boat bank kayak doesn't matter where i'm fishing it's going to be a rod that i have with me and there it is guys my top five rods and reels if i can only have five to take all over the country with me that could be general purpose do a little bit of everything get away with a little bit of everything be in the boat the bank the kayak those are my five rods that's what i'm going to have with me now i'm very blessed to work with people like lose and so i've got a lot of different rods and reel combos that are very specific to what i like to do but still there's still days that I just like to throw a couple rods into the boat or a couple rods into the kayak or into the truck and just go fishing. And, you know, those five for me, I feel like I can do absolutely anything in the world and be successful at it. But as always, guys, thank you for watching. Questions or comments, you know where to go leave them. Also, like I said, go down in the comment section, leave me a comment about a video that you guys would like to see. Also, go down below in the description. I'll have links to everything that I talked about today. They are links to Tackle Warehouse. They're an affiliate linking program through Tackle Warehouse, and it helps me to keep gas in the boat, in the truck, and just keep the channel running. So go use those links. It really helps me out. But as always, you guys are sweet. Thank you for watching.